When building a home projection show, you will have to make accommodations for the perspective changes that occur due to the placement and angle of your projector. Ignoring this will result in digital assets that do not appear correctly when displayed on your home. Let's review two different ways we can modify assets for these perspective changes. Looking at the map file in the Fusion page, you can see that the perspective from the projector is forming the outlines into a V-like shape. Also notice that even though the home has multiple surfaces that exist on their own plane, from the projector's perspective, we are dealing with a single surface. This is because the projector is mounted looking directly at the home, instead of being angled off to the side. If your projector placement is angled toward the home, don't panic. We will cover that scenario in this series. For now just follow along so you understand the basic concepts of projector skew. The first way we can deal with perspective changes is by fitting each asset to the house individually. Please note that this is not my preferred method, so you don't have to follow along with this part. I just want you to be aware that it exists. Let's enable this fusion tree limb and then move the background node over to give us some room. Recall that our fusion tree is made up of the main trunk and the tree limbs for each masked section of the home. Now, in order to add digital assets, we will create a series of tree branches for the current limb. To create a branch, select the background node and add a merge node from the toolbar. Next, bring down the media you want to add to the branch from the media pool. Here I'll bring down a window image I want to map to these windows. With the media selected, hit Ctrl plus spacebar on your keyboard to bring up the search menu and search for the corner positioner node. Going forward we will refer to this as a corner pin node. Then plug everything into the tree limb to create the branching set. To fit this to the window, I just need to drag each corner to the corner of the existing windows on the map file. If I want to add more windows, I can just select both of these nodes and copy them using the Ctrl plus C keyboard shortcut, then paste them in the nodes pane with Ctrl plus V. With the first merge on the limb selected, add another merge. Then connect the second branch and align the corners for this corner pin node to a second window. Keep repeating this process for other windows. You will also need to perform this process for any other assets you wish to add. You can see that this does work. If you choose to do your future builds this way, I won't stop you. If you would prefer to do it this way, be aware that the one thing you never want to do is plug a corner pin into a corner pin. You will always need to keep them disconnected from each other and merge them together down the line. Where this will fall apart though, is when you wish to have an asset that moves across the entire home. With this corner pin method, you may also inadvertently stretch the assets too far, since you are forcing them to fit an area that they don't properly fit into. Finally, depending on how many assets you want to use to build your show, you might end up having to do a lot of corner pinning. For those reasons, I personally prefer to create a corner pin filter, which all assets will collectively pass through before merging into the main trunk. Creating a filter does take time and can be an exercise in patience, but it is worth it when you consider the time you will save creating corner pins for every individual asset you intend to use. Let's create one by removing all of these existing nodes that are making up our tree branches. I'll increase the alpha of this background node so I have some visibility of the coloring, but can still see through to the map file. With the background node selected, use Ctrl plus spacebar to bring up the search menu again. Then search for grid. Make sure you select grid from the menu, not grid warp. You can see we now have a set of grid lines showing. Using the inspector, we can change the color of the lines to make them more visible. If needed, modify the background node that is anchoring the limb to help with visibility. Just be sure you can still see through to your map file. You can also use the inspector to increase or decrease the number of lines on the grid. Once you are satisfied, use the search menu again to add a corner pin node. Start by pulling the corners of the node into the same general shape of your home based on the map file. If you have to take the corners outside of the range of your set resolution, you will be perfectly fine. Everything added will ultimately be contained within the mask, so this isn't an issue. Once it is in the same general shape of the home, 
the goal will be to manipulate each corner in a way that will line up the grid lines, with lines from your map file. Pull corners out, or push them back in as needed to get these alignments. Be sure to focus on both horizontal and vertical lines while making your adjustments. Using trim or lines from the windows are excellent guides to line up your grid to. When you think you are getting close to having everything lined up, move the corner pin closer to the main trunk. Then, create a branch using any media images or video of your choosing. This is just to gauge the skew, so it can be anything you want. Add a transform node from the toolbar as well, so you can resize your media as needed. With the transform node selected, move the asset around your map, and you'll notice that the skew is changing depending on the location it has been moved to. Feel free to put a few of your assets into place, as though you were actually building a show. This time, if we duplicate the assets for a new branch, all we have to do is move it into place. A nice feature of the Fusion Node system is that we won't have to duplicate media nodes if we don't want to. If two branches are using the same source media, we can just reuse that same node. As you add more branches, you'll start seeing where adjustments to the corner pin need to be made. Make small incremental tweaks as you go. Here is an example of an asset that might have been overly stretched if we relied on its own corner pin node for placement. When passed through the filter, you can see it is not a perfect fit for the window. Had we forced it to fit, it might not look right when using it in a show. Be patient as you're fine-tuning your corner pin filter. It can take some time to get it right. It will never be perfect, but if we can get this filter to be 90% or more of what we need, it won't be too noticeable, and anyone watching your show won't be able to tell if something's off by a little bit. In this example build, there are probably many more adjustments I need to make to get it right. Ultimately, those final adjustments will need to be made while displaying this on the actual home. We will be covering that process in the next video where we go over some more advanced modifications. Once you are fully confident in your filter, you can begin to copy the filter onto other limbs of your fusion tree. As an example, let's copy this filter in the test media onto the garage door limb. Don't perform that step until you are sure that your filter is adequate after performing a live test. If you do end up having to make adjustments, you'll have to recopy all the corner pin nodes a second time. Of course, having only one filter will only apply if you have your projector pointed directly at your home. If your projector is pointed at an angle, which presents multiple surfaces you'd need to build a filter for, then there will be a bit more work to do. We will cover this situation and live testing of your filter in the next video in this series. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future tutorials.